Well, here we are in the wonderful Tuck Inn in Bradbury Street in Dalston, part of the uh, new Dalston Village Cultural Quarter. I'm here with uh, the G-Man himself for version 14, show number 14 it's getting of there. the G-Man Talks Boxing. It's there, it's there, it's there, it's there. So today we have massively upgraded the production values. We've actually got a proper crew <laughs> instead of a handheld <laughs> mobile on the Camden Road. <sighs> now, there's a, a, such a lot happening, it's hard to know when to start. Yeah. But let's focus, for starters, on that amazing uh, heavyweight fight that was meant to be a shoe-in for Tyson Fury in a lead up to Wilder. I mean, Wallin came in and did a bit of a number on Fury in his own way. What happened, G-Man? Well, I, listen, what happened to Fury is the same thing that happened to AJ. You ask any fighter, you can't go in a ring acting as though you're only there for the beer. Well, it ain't just beer, you gotta fight. So he went in there, couldn't get motivated, nearly lost his eye. The same with Anthony Joshua. He went in the ring, couldn't get motivated, couldn't get up for the, can't get up. The worst thing for a fighter is complacency. Okay, so he was complacent. Sure. And he got, it was a proper left hand that busted him up, wasn't it? That's right. He can lose his eye because the mind is not right. He's not ready. He didn't go there to fight. He went there to put up a, a, a parade, a parade. So it was a promotional fight, which what? turned into a real war. But it's a fight. You got to remember it's a fight. It's a fight. The geezer come to fight. He may have come to play around, but the geezer didn't come to play around. It's the same thing with Anthony Joshua. Okay, with everything that was on the line for that, Fury had to come through that. Sure. Do you think in a normal way of things that that fight would have got stopped by the doctor if well, it hadn't been so much riding on that contest? Well, you know, you know, it's, it comes down to discretion. The thing about it, <coughs> let's face it, Fury wasn't really in any real trouble. He was distressed. The mere fact he's got a cut and it's danger. But he wasn't really at box, at class, and being beaten up. I mean, that guy, he can't even be Fury's really sparring partner if Fury really wants to be. Listen, what I saw with Fury, even though he's just poncing around and playing around, is there's a lot of heavyweights out there. If he improves Fury, and he, there's a lot for him to improve, if he, he has that half a fight, if he learns the next half, I'm not going to tell you what it is. But if he learns the next half, no one ain't going to beat him for the next five years. Well, his father was very, very critical of the training team. Sure. Now, as far as I'm concerned, Ben Davidson, a young guy, he yeah. seems to me have done him and Fury have worked very well together. Sure. Was the father's criticism justified or unjustified? Well, you know, the thing about when the father is there, it's a different camp. It's a different camp completely. When Ben Davidson is there, it's mates. There's a difference between a coach and your mates. It's a different mentality. Listen, people have a misunderstanding about what coaching is all about. They've got a misunderstanding. Each situation is different on its own merit. When you've got someone who is there like a, in an administered situation, that means they do everything for you. It doesn't mean that they tell you what to do. It's a different thing completely. Ben Davis are not telling him what to do. They have an agreement. It's a different kettle of fish. He's not an amateur boxer. He's a professional fighter. And he has to feel that he's the man with the balls. He's the big man. Everyone does what I want them to do. Moving on slightly, of course, Daniel Dubois has been out this week saying that he ripped Fury to shreds. He's actually said that openly. And people are taking it seriously. Yeah. Of course, Daniel's fighting at Albert Hall Friday night. He's fighting a totally another totally unknown Ghanaian. The last un unknown Ghanaian, Richard Larty, put up a pretty good fight. You've seen bits and pieces of this Tete. Any, what do you think of it? Well, you know, Tete was what we were called in the game. We would have said like, you know, he's a secret. But this one, he's a dud. It's a dud. This is a dud. <laughs> he's 19 and 0. Do you think that's a padded record with loads of sort of rubbish fights? Mate, he's not going any more than two rounds. Two rounds. Two rounds. And if he get past two rounds, believe me, I'm buying him a cup of tea. You're sure it. Now, before we get on to the really big fight, just a couple of words about the women. Nicola Adams, she's had a long layoff. She's boxing uh, Maria Salinas. Now, Salinas is ranked only number seven in Mexico at flyweight. This mm -hmm. is a world title fight. Yeah. 
But of course, because all the good women fighters are in Mexico and 100%, hundreds of them. 100%. Even though she's only number seven in Mexico, Ad Adams has got a fight on her hands, hasn't she? That's right. She ain't got some a baby to lie down. She ain't gonna walk in there with a, just a, a padded bra. Uh-uh. She's gonna come in there believing me and she's gonna give it. Listen, when you talk about women boxing in that division, you gotta talk about Japanese and Mexicans. And they're the ones who are the premier. So Nicola, she knows she's got a hard fight. She knows it's not a walkover. She knows it's going to be a competitive fight. But you know what? She's looking to come out victorious. And maybe she'll come out victorious. But it's not going to be a walkover. Following night, Porter, Sean Porter, who's on a roll of wins against Mr. Errol Spence. Right? Spence thinks he's unbeatable. How do you see that contest going? You know, you know I'm not a fan of Spence. In my mind... Spence is a solid fighter, but there's no wow there. He doesn't turn me on, doesn't make me shut up. He doesn't, you know. But there's one thing I know about this fight. He has this, you see, Spence's last fight with Garcia, who moved up two divisions, I was disappointed. How could you have a geezer who moved up two, two divisions and you go the distance? And you're supposed to be a like 147 premier for No, 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 no. This is why this fight is exciting because for the simple reason he has come out, Spence, and he has told the world he's going down. Now that's what we want. That's what we want. We want to know your intentions. So he said, Porter's going down. Porter said, you can put me down. Are you having a laugh? You're going down. That is called a fight. Let's move on to, for me, the premier, premier contest between now and Christmas time. And that's at November the 2nd at the Staples Center in Los Angeles, one of the now becoming one of the, the, the epicenters of the fight game. We've got Canelo, who's moving up the weights like a, like a seesaw. The world has gone mad. Right, and he's matched against 37-year-old Sergei the Crusher Kovalev, who had a good win against Anthony Yard recently. I mean, Kovalev is a class, class operator. He's fighting in his division against Canelo, he surely got to have a chance. The world has gone mad. If this fight was made at catch weight, catch weight means Kovalev coming at 12 stone two on the scales. But it's not, it's made it light heavy. They're crazy. Who's crazy? The, whoever made this fight is, oh, Kovalev is laughing. Kovalev's laughing. I wish I was his agent. I wish I was part of him because for the simple reason, you know, he ain't gonna get hurt. If Kovalev jabs and jabs, as Buddy McGirt says he's going to jab, right, will that negate, Buddy McGirt says that's going to negate Canelo's body work. What are they going to tell you in this fight? <clears throat> Canelo can't come forward. That's what it's going to tell you in this fight. He can't come forward. How he's going to win this fight? He can't come forward. He cannot come forward. When he feels the power of a light heavyweight in front of him. And a powerful jab as well. He obviously. ain't, he can't, no man, he can slip and slip and slip and slip. The first time he feels a right hand, listen, of course, we all subject his opinion. Well, this is boxing. Buy a ticket. Buy a ticket. <laughs> Lastly, I've just got to touch on it now, okay? And this is, this is the last fight we're going to analyze in this particular edition. Um, Joshua versus Ruiz. I've seen Ruiz on the pads on YouTube and on on the internet, mm -hmm. Facebook. I mean, he looks as if he's lost a bit of weight. Mm -hmm. He looks as if he doesn't have a care in the world. Mm -hmm. As far as he's concerned, he's going to Saudi Arabia sure. to repeat the performance. Sure, sure. And come home a lot wealthier. He's going to go there and he's going to come back with, in his mind, six cans of crude oil. That's what he's thinking. Let's be honest about the situation. Let's be fresh about the situation. He's the champion. Joshua has to go and redeem himself. In that fight, you saw what happened in that fight. The first round, he went down. He realized, what am I doing? What am I doing? I won't hurt. I'm sorry to say, the, you know, the advice of premier trainers in his corner just was completely useless. Get busy, Josh. Every time he tried to get busy, Ruiz was coming back with more busier, yeah. six counters. That's right. Two, a jab and a hook, and then Ruiz will come back with well, six you, shots. Like I said, he went into that, that ring and his head wasn't there for a fight. He went in there with a champion mentality. 
but he didn't go there to represent the champion mentality. It's the same with Fury. Fury went in there just for jolly. There ain't no jolly in the ring. Listen up, you guys. When you're going in the ring, get this right. Get your head right. There ain't no jolly. Get your head right. Now, now I'm going to just draw, lastly, on something quite controversial. I want the honest answers here. And you'll see what I mean in a minute, right? Since this program you started... You honest... Yes. This is boxing, Joe. Yes, I know. But see, <laughs> you'll know what I mean in a minute, Gary. G-Man. Since we've done this program, at least half of it is centred on the heavyweights. Yes. Okay? The other week, a certain heavyweight, yes. who you used to train, yes. called Derek Chisora, yes. came out in the middle of a press conference and said, no one cares about the small guys anymore. As Mike Tyson said, boxing is now back at the heavyweights and all the money is back in the heavyweights and all the other divisions can go and take a hike. Yeah. That is what he said. That's right. Regardless, That's right. regardless, I thought Chisora had a point. Yes. And I actually backed his start to get him more money in the way he did it. Yes. Over to you. Well, all you got to think about, if you're Sajora or you're Eddie Hearn, he's speaking a bit on the behalf of Sajora, and Eddie Hearn is, is speaking on the, on the behalf of Eddie Hearn. Well, let me put it to you. One is called employer, and one is called employee. Well, Which I, one you want to be, employer or employee? Well, employer, but that's what Parker said. But, Right, Parker, the opponent, said exactly that. But my question is this, and I understand where you're coming from, but my question is this. It's a pay-per-view card. You know? Yeah. If Chisora and Parker was not on the bill, and it was just Josh Taylor versus Regis Prograce, would that fight sell pay-per-view? Well, sir, on the grounds of probability, really and truly, I saw your point, I can see your point there. But let's face it. Ain't no big deal. Ain't no big deal. On the grounds of boxing, Pazurus and, and, and Taylor, they have a right to be there. They're, they're, this is how boxing goes. What the other path was talking about is about the sales of tickets. In boxing, you sell tickets, I jump on the bandwagon. I sell tickets, you jump on the bandwagon. It's just a sheer situation. It's the nature of boxing. Have a good night. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Thank you for watching. That was a 14th edition of the G-Man Talks Boxing. We've touched on five or six premier contests that are happening between now and Christmas time. And we'll, of course, we'll keep you all updated with the next edition of the G-Man Talks Boxing.